Um, so we'll start here with some history on the museum building itself. It was originally opened by a group of local women. Um, two were actually female doctors during the 1960s. Very uncommon during that period, about 6% of all doctors were actually female during that time. So very, very uncommon. Um, one of our lovely doctors is Dr. Newell, right there on the wall. Uh, she practiced right here in Bailey. She was a seventh generation country doctor. Wow. Um, she had her house across the street, and I'll point that out to you. Um, that's her on her way out the door for a house call, actually with her bag in hand and her pistol under her arm. She was a bit of a spitfire, that woman. <laughs> um, the second female doctor was Dr. Gloria Graham, who practiced dermatology in Wilson, and she was a third generation country doctor. Um, so they're both kind of on different ends. During that period, you were starting to see doctors moving more towards specialized office-based care and away from the rural home-based care. Um, and we have a picture of several of the women here on the front porch of the house across the street. Um, the original museum building comprised of two abandoned country doctor offices. Um, they were both found in the area and then moved here to serve as the museum in the 60s. So not original to this location, but original to the area and to Eastern North Carolina. Um, then next we have some information on East Carolina University. We are a part of East Carolina University. We are managed by their Lopez Health Sciences Library. We have been since 2003. The founders gifted the museum and the collection to ECU, to their library to manage it. They wanted to be able to carry on the legacy of rural medicine and how practices were changing, which was their drive behind wanting to open the museum originally as well. So go Pirates. <laughs> During this period, they were called three-year diploma programs. Um, that's because it would take three years to complete those programs. So nursing students would live in dorms at the hospitals. They would attend classes full time while working a um, 40 to 60 hour work week taught by those same doctors and nurses. So their wow. teachers were also the same ones they were working alongside on the floor. So it was very um, rigorous, very time consuming. We have some um, rules here printed out that you can look at from a pamphlet of a program that we found out of Rocky Mount. Um, so there were dress codes, curfews, noise hours. Um, a lot of these programs, you also couldn't be married or pregnant while you were attending them. Um, so you had to be very committed to the program. I've heard stories of women being like a month from graduating, thinking they could pull one over and get married in secret. The school found out and kicked them out. They became a teacher, so <laughs> it's still kind of all bad. Um, we have many caps here on display. That's because um, these would be different from each school, and this would be meant to tell you when they were out on the floor who the students were. So there'd be a probationary period of about six months because there were a lot of really strict rules. They want to make sure you're going to be committed to the program, you're going to do the work that's necessary. Um, so after that period, they would receive their cap. Um, they would also have, in their third year, they would have this black band. <laughs> that would be added to let you know of their advanced status. So they're not a registered nurse, but they're not a rookie either. They're working their way up. Here we Black have belt. a, what's that? Black belt. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, here we have a nursing student uniform and you can tell it's a student uniform. Um, the dress here is blue, registered nurses. It would have been a white dress with a white apron over top of that. Um, so nursing students' dresses would have been blue or blue and white striped just as another way to let you know who the students were when they were out on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, but they had hem checks, uniform checks at the start of each shift, everything that was starched, pressed, pristine, very uncomfortable, not super practical, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was what was expected for the time. Um, this cape, it has here, if you look at the collar, a WH. It's from Watts Hospital in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. um, so the capes would be given for them to wear for whatever hospital they were associated with. So when they were out outside of the hospital in uniform, especially in the winter if they needed a coat or anything, you knew which hospital they were representing. Um, so if you were in uniform outside the hospital, there were still a lot of strict rules you had to follow as a student and as a registered nurse as well. Um, you couldn't be seen talking to visitors, leaning into cars, um, things like that if you were in uniform. Excuse me.